Hi YouTube, um, I did another video on my animal skull collection um, but it was really just a quick kind of look through my cabinet so I thought I'd do a slightly more detailed one and label up everything so you can see it. So this is my cow skull. Um, what's really good about this is uh, it's got all its horns and everything and it's a really brilliant skull. Um, and I was actually given it by a guy who works as a conservationist um, and they use the cows on this particular bit of land to keep all the foliage short for natterjack toads. Um, and this cow died and it had been there for months and you know all the skin had gone and it was just a skeleton and the guy said look you can have the skull as long as you um, you know bag up all the bones so we can remove it from the site so I did I bagged up all the bones took the skull home uh, didn't think anything more of it uh, until about a couple of years later I said uh, oh, it's a shame I didn't keep the rest of the bones because I could have made the whole skeleton. And the guy said, yeah, I've still got all the bones if you want them. They're still in bags under my hedge. So I collected all the rest of the bones and I've now got the whole skeleton of this cow, um, which is a brilliant thing. I'll show you that at the end of the video. This pony skeleton I just bought on eBay, but um, since then I've actually found a whole pony skeleton as well. Um, and again, I'll I'll show you that and tell you about it at the end of the video. Um, but again, this is a really nice skull with all the teeth and everything. Um, and it's quite a big uh, specimen, so it looks really nice in the cabinet. This is another uh, eBay purchase. Um, I was looking for one with um, really good tusks, and I think uh, this is a nice one. You can get them with really, really massive tusks, uh, even bigger than this, but I needed it to fit in my display cabinet, so this one is just right. This wild boar skull was also from eBay, and um, after I'd bought it, the guy actually emailed me and said, oh, your, your skull, I've just posted it out to you, and I noticed that it's got an extra set of teeth that it's not supposed to have. So this, this is quite a rare specimen, really, quite unusual. Um, and I'm really pleased with it. And I, I want to um, get just a domestic pig skull at some point. So I've I've got like the main sort of pig varieties, if you like. Uh, there's also another thing called a babarusa, which has got like um, really massive tusks that go up and over its head. Uh, that would be really nice to get, but they're really expensive skulls. So uh, unless I happen to find one cheaply, I, I probably won't end up getting one. Okay, this feral goat um, actually came from Cyprus. I had a little holiday in Cyprus and uh, actually if you want feral goats, <laughs> there's a lot in Cyprus. They're everywhere. You can find skeletons all over the place. Um, so this was yeah, a really nice find with the bottom jaw and the horns and everything. And I just couldn't resist bringing it back with me in my backpack. Okay, this roe deer um, skull my uncle gave to me. Uh, it's a really nice skull with really nice um, antlers. Um, it's a shame it hasn't got the bottom jaw, but um, I'll keep looking out and see if I can find uh, another deer skull at some point. I always see dead deer at the side of the road, but um, I haven't fancied you know, bringing one home with me and dealing with it so far. I, I suppose I might at some point. I might even end up um, trying to get the whole skeleton from one. But... Um, this is really nice for now and it, it just shows what the um, antlers and the skull look like. I spent a year in Australia back in 2000 and red kangaroo carcasses were kind of everywhere, uh, especially along the Nullarbor Plain. And these massive great big wedge-tailed eagles would come down and feed on the carcasses. So I probably could have collected lots more um, red kangaroo skulls and it's a shame in a way that I didn't. There's probably quite a few other skulls that I could have collected but I wasn't as into collecting um, skulls back then. I remember um, meeting a guy out in Australia and uh, he had just collected himself a red kangaroo, uh, you know, fresh dead specimen and he had it in the front of his um, ute and he was taking it home to uh, cook it and eat it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they they <laughs> they don't mind eating a the old kangaroo every so often. Okay, this is a quokka skull. This is also from Australia. Um, it's a smaller marsupial related to the red kangaroo. If you compare the two skulls, you'll see they look very similar. Um, but yeah, this this guy's a lot shorter. Um, and we found lots of uh, quokkas on Rottnest Island, little island where um 
they're so friendly they come up to you and things and uh, I got some amazing photographs and things of them as well um, but yeah I couldn't resist bringing this one home when I found it uh, this domestic dog skull was also from Cyprus um, again lots of uh, dead animals in Cyprus I found dead uh, cats uh, goats and yeah, dogs um, this one because it was a whole skeleton actually I kind of wish that I'd and bagged up the rest of the bones and brought the rest home as well but um but anyway the skull is amazing it's a it's a big dog skull so maybe it's from like a sort of alsatian or uh, maybe a rottweiler or something is that sort of size dog okay a friend of mine um gave me this a uh, beaver skull for a birthday present once um this is the kind of birthday presents that i love <laughs> and uh he'd actually got it from his uh, friend in russia uh and his friend out in russia like shoots beavers and eats them uh so he basically put in this request and said could you get a skull for my friend and bear in mind that this guy knew that um i wanted the skull from the beaver he actually when he shot the beaver he actually shot it in the head so um so yeah i when i got the skull it was brilliant but i did have to repair a hole in it um <laughs> where it had been shot in the head the guy did end up obviously eating the rest of the beaver so i, I guess he didn't want any uh, shot left in it that he could uh, eat uh, this is a Canadian lynx skull. This was also from eBay. Um, really nice kind of example of, of a feline skull. Um, here's an example of a not so nice feline skull. This is a roadkill cat skull that I found and you can see it's all kind of smashed up so it probably died of a head injury. Okay, this red fox skull, um, this is one where I actually removed the head of a dead fox, like a roadkill fox, and uh, boiled it up and got the skull from it. So collecting skulls, you know, it can be a bit disgusting. Maybe I could have waited and just, you know, found one that had been actually uh, cleaned by nature sort of thing. But, um, yeah, every so often I get this urge to... <laughs> to like remove the head of an animal or something which is yeah really disgusting and then I boil it I've got like a special kind of old pan that I just use for like boiling skulls but whenever I do it my wife is a bit like oh Leon you're not doing that again are you um, because it it does make the place smell for <laughs> a couple of days um, I have a, a very uh, forgiving wife let's put it that way I did the same thing with this juvenile. Um, I found this, it's probably like a year or so later, um, and it was just a perfect looking um, little baby fox, but again, a roadkill victim. Um, so I thought I'll take it home and boil the skull from it. And it is worth boiling skulls, because you know, you put up with the smell for a little bit, but then you've got another cool skull to add to your collection. Okay, my um, good conservationist friend, the same guy that uh, gave me the cow skull, um, I was speaking to him at one point and I said, I haven't got a badger skull yet to go in my collection. Um, and I knew that he used to kind of cut heads off roadkill animals and that kind of thing when he was younger. Um, and I, I sort of hoped that he might be able to do the same for me. So uh, he, he said he'd look out for one. And then a while later... He phoned me up and he said, I've got a badger skull for you if you want it. You've got to come and collect it sort of thing. So I turn up at his house and it's, <laughs> he's got the whole badger there uh, and he just put it under his hedge. And uh, it had probably been there <laughs> for a good couple of weeks by the time I got there. Um, so we had to put this thing in the boot of the car and bring it home. And it absolutely stank like all the way home. It was disgusting. And then obviously when I got it home, I had to put it in the bath and... Um, cut the thing's head off and this thing was like crawling with maggots um it had like it, it still had some fleas on it uh it was a horrible thing but um again like it was a big um adult male uh and i've got a really cool uh specimen out of it it was just a bit disgusting at the time and my wife wasn't particularly happy <laughs> um you can tell this is a male by the way because it's got that ridge on the um back of the skull uh, females don't have that or if they do it's really really um small at the back of the skull 
uh, rabbit skull. Um, these can be found everywhere. I've probably found a couple of dozen of these over the years. Grey squirrel skull. Again, another easy skull to find. Um, if you want to start collecting skulls, just start looking in woodlands and things and you'll probably find things like this. Hedgehog skull. I mean, unfortunately, you see so many dead hedgehogs, don't you, on the side of the road. But um, you you could easily just take one home and boil the head. But you just got to make sure you don't find one that's completely flat, like a pancake. This is a guinea pig skull. Um, my brother gave me this. I think he bought a um, dead guinea pig and then uh, got the skull out of it uh, when he was quite a bit younger. Um, I have to buy quite a lot of frozen rats to feed to my various reptiles. Um, so this is just one that I um, decided to get the skull from. Uh, this is a stoat skull that I got on eBay. Um, I bought a weasel one as well. You'll see that in a second. Um, I've only ever seen like one or two stoats and one or two weasels in my whole life. And when you do see them, it tends to be just a kind of a flash as they run along a hedgerow or something. So I thought the chances of me finding a dead weasel or a dead stoat are quite slim, so I ended up buying them on eBay instead. Okay, small rodent skulls are really good to find in um, owl pellets. So yeah, if you can find some owl pellets, you'll find loads of little tiny skulls. Um, and I've put some photos of like typical owl pellet contents at the end of this video for you to see. Um, all three of these shrew species were found in one owl pellet that we um, collected in Norfolk. Okay, moving on to reptile skulls. Uh, this is a really um, nice example of a crocodile skull where all of the teeth and everything are perfect. Um, it's quite hard to find them where teeth haven't kind of snapped off and things. Um, but having said that, this is one that was farmed for um, food. Uh, so if you find ones that have been um, raised on a crocodile farm they do tend to be a bit more perfect okay i keep lots of uh, reptiles and when one dies rather than throw the body away which seems like a bit of a waste uh, i will boil the head and get the skull from it and this one i've actually got the whole skeleton and i just haven't put it all together yet okay yemen's chameleons are a species that i used to breed a lot of um We've had uh, probably about 180 babies of these in the past. Um, and so, again, like this was an adult male that when it died, I just thought it was a shame to throw it away. So I boiled the head and it's a perfect, really nice skull. This is an adult red blood python um, that I like to think died of um, old age as well. But um, you can see it's got all really sharp, sort of recurved teeth. So you wouldn't want to get bitten by one of these. Okay, this is the only amphibian skull that I've put on here. Um, ornate horn frogs are pretty big. They eat sort of uh, mice and that sort of thing. Um, and you can see they've got uh, teeth. There are not that many uh, frog species that have got sharp, pointy teeth like this. Uh, there's this one, and then there's uh, the other famous one is the African bullfrog. Okay, moving on to birds. Here's a gannet. And um, this one I found as a dead adult uh, on a beach. Uh, and I <laughs> you had to basically like try and lop its head off with um, rocks because uh, I didn't have any equipment with me uh, and it's quite hard to do that on a beach without kind of getting noticed so it was a uh, yeah a little bit embarrassing but you couldn't really drag the whole bird home with you because it's a it's a massive bird so uh, a friend gave me this red kite skull which was a um, roadkill specimen as well I think um, I saw like a buzzard once dead at the side of the road and I thought, oh, I'll go back and get that. And it was on the A3. So I went back at like midnight to collect it and uh, crossed three lanes of oncoming traffic uh, only to find that somebody else had already taken its head in the time <laughs> since I'd seen it. So it just shows that there are other nutters out there like me. Uh, this is a duck skull that I haven't identified yet, but it was from Australia. Carrion crow skull. This is probably one of the um, easiest um, bird skulls to find. Pheasant skull. We were actually given a brace of pheasant to cook and eat. So this is from one of those. Wood pigeon. Another really uh, common bird and easy skull to find. Um, I found a dead green woodpecker which you don't see very often. And so I thought I can't resist taking that home and getting the skull from that. 
Okay, here's a few skeletons. Um, this one I used uh, domestic beetles to clean it up. So the domestic beetles eat all of the flesh, and they can pick all the bones, like even like the little thin rib bones and things, uh, to perfection, basically. Yeah, these are the same beetles that they use in museums to clean bones, um, and like it just saves you doing a proper mount, which can take a long time to kind of join all the bones and things back together. The domestic beetles, you can get them to stop at a certain point where the skeleton is still intact um, and all the bones haven't fallen apart yet because there's still enough cartilage. Okay, here's a dead pony that I found in Cornwall at the base of a cliff. It had obviously fallen off of the cliff and died. Um, and I ended up collecting, I was just going to collect the skull, but I ended up collecting all of the bones, bringing them home. It's pretty stinky and I was on holiday with some friends at the time so it wasn't particularly appreciated. Uh, he was called uh, Honky the Donkey for a while uh, and uh, now he's uh, Boney the Pony but it's really nice to have a whole complete skeleton like this. And here's the cow skeleton that I mentioned earlier. Um, this is it when it was in my conservatory uh, and I did at one point join it all together just using like a glue gun uh, which was fine, it stayed up for quite a while, but then when I moved it into this conservatory, on a particularly hot day, all the glue gun melted, and I came back to just a pile of bones again. So I've had to uh, rejoin it all together, um, and now I've used uh, screws and things like that, because uh, I'm not going to make that same mistake again, uh, and it's down in my studio instead now. Okay, I'll leave you with some photos of typical owl pellet contents. Um, so look out for owl pellets at the base of trees and that kind of thing in woodlands. Um, they can be mistaken for sort of dog feces and that sort of thing. So you have to look carefully. Um, you can see like the fur and that sort of thing in them. They've got a, a good texture and you can quite often actually see bones sticking out of them and things. And then you just collect them up. They're just pellets that have been coughed up by owls, so they're not particularly disgusting. You just put them in warm water to soak for a while, and then you can just get a fine pair of tweezers and just pull out all the bones like I've done in this image. Um, one owl pellet can contain lots of um, individual skulls and things. So if you take out all of the... Um, you know mandibles and you know any teeth and things that you find and put them separately to one side then you can you know figure out what teeth go into what jaws uh, and you can join all the skulls together i guess if you had the patience you could um, make up complete rodent skeletons um, but i haven't gone that far yet i just like to take the skulls out these uh, longer, thin skulls are from shrews. They're really quite obvious because they're pointy looking. The other skull on the right is uh, from a vole, typical looking vole skull. And here's a couple of typical vole jaws. Uh, this image shows some molars uh, to the left hand side and some incisors. Um, when you first see these, you know, it's hard to tell uh, if they're from uh, mice or voles. Um, but you get used to it with practice. Um, you don't even have to know what all the various bones are. You know, you don't have to know, like, what's a tibia, what's a fibia, what's a femur, or whatever. You can just split them into bones that look the same. And things like ribs are very obvious, so you can make a little pile of ribs. Uh, and you can see that's what I was doing in this image. But yeah, it's just a really good way to end up with a lot of small skulls for your collection. Um, and lots of different species as well if you can collect the owl pellets from various locations. Uh, it's just something else to look out for really when you're on walks. Right, I hope you've enjoyed looking through my skull collection. Um, it's ongoing so I'll just keep adding to it as I find more. Um, please hit subscribe to see my other collections on YouTube uh, and anything else that I post up in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.